Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Sacred Stoners. And we're finally going to talk about the namesake of this podcast. I don't think we've talked about Sacred Stones yet. Over the last month or two, I've run some community polls on my YouTube account uh, in the community tab, ranking each Sacred Stones unit. Now that it finished, uh, we're going to go through them, talk about where you guys place them and what we think about these units. Uh, Just for reference, when I asked people to tier, I gave no criteria. I gave four tiers, so there's really good, pretty good, just okay, and not so good. And I asked people to rate units based on their best route. Uh, So people rated based on a variety of play styles. So I'm personally going to be trying to talk about units uh, from a variety of play styles and not just an efficiency perspective, because I feel like it would be kind of uh, a dick move to be like, you guys can rate on anything, but I'm going to talk about efficiency and dunk on you. Uh, So I'm not going to do that. But with us today, I have Sequitur, as always. Hi. And we also have Akira so of YouTube fame. Hi, I'm Akira so. I run a small YouTube channel where I mostly stream Fire Emblem fan games and make videos to try and draw more attention to them, with rare other analytical FE videos. FE8 holds a special place among the Fire Emblem games in my heart. I started my channel with an LTC of an FE8 rebalance and later streamed an Iron Man of FE8, where all playable units have zero speed base and growth. Liz and I have even discussed FE8 before on YouTube when we discussed changes that we'd make to the FE8 promotion bonuses. So yeah, I guess let's just get right into it. One thing I wanted to call out at the beginning was just some general comments about FE8 that I saw throughout all of the characters, which was that that I just wanted to touch on, which were that doubling in FE8 is trivial and supports generally. I think doubling in FE8 is like slightly harder than people think it is. Like not that much harder, but a little bit harder. There are are actually some bosses that you can fail to double, and rangers have speed. Rangers have speed, and also, like, fighters slash brigands actually tend to have speed. Yeah, like, they're not going to double you, but some of your less fast units won't double them. The game Mm -hmm. also, like, has thresholds. I don't don't know if FE7 has any thresholds, like, at all. I'm (laughs) sure it has some. Mostly the bosses, it's for that one, yeah. The last map has some stuff because the enemies there have hands, but like ninety yeah. percent of enemies in FE seven can be doubled, including the Merms, which is like okay, that's a choice. Yeah, like the only fast generic I can think of off the top of my head is the Valkyries. Yeah, uh, and then supports in general. I also wanted to touch on. I just don't really get supports when I play Sacred Stones. Even when I play slow, I don't tend to unlock a lot, uh, which is why I am not going to talk about them much here because. I just don't usually get them. Yeah, I don't usually get them either. I get supports when I grind them in the Tower of Volney, but like, I'm not sure that's really yeah. (laughs) Usually, you know. But okay, that's enough preamble. The first character we had was Erica, who was placed in just okay. And some of the things called out in the comments were that she promotes late and gets uh, Sieglind and a horse, which makes her good for one rounding monsters. And that she can be okay in the early game due to axes and a lot of enemies having them. Uh, I'll start with my thoughts on her, I guess. I could see bottom of just okay. I would, I maybe would have gone not so good. Yeah, I think I would have gone top of not so, like towards the upper end of not so good. I do agree she can be okay in the early game due to axes, but she's not even that good against the axes. She's not guaranteed to double the brigands in chapter two. They have to roll down on speed. Mm -hmm. She can kill monsters in the late game, but so can everybody else. It's a seven move horse. Yeah, me when I promote. It's not even it's not even an Elliewood moment of promoting to an unpromoted cavalier, because she's still sword locked. That's true. She doesn't even get javelin. Like I was playing FE7 recently, and Javelin Elliewood is like a thing. It's not good, but it's a thing. Erica doesn't even get that. Um, but I still probably would have put her in, like, just okay, because, like, if you give her some of the early game EXP, she is, like, essentially a decent axe killer, which is, like, a something. But it's it's pretty low. It's it's not a niche that really needs filled in that game. So, yeah, I'm fine with just okay. Like I said, I think top of not so good is where I would have gone, but 
I, mean, I think the comments are basically correct. You can one round monsters. She can kill some axe dudes. She's not the best at it, but she could do it. Mm-hmm, mm. I like to use her, but like, I don't, that's about it. She's never really a powerhouse. Oh yeah. I mean, she's my favorite character in the series, so I love using her, but yeah, but like, I won't have, I wouldn't put her high. All right. Next up is one. I think we will find very little disagreement on Seth. And that's yeah. Seth. <laughs> he mm-hmm. was voted into really good with Yay. 90% of the vote. <laughs> Yay! I mean, thank God. If um, if, uh, if he'd been ranked anywhere else, I feel like a lot of this would be dedicated to us talking about Seth. Yeah, yeah. Which I um, desperately don't want to do. The only, and even some of the, the low votes, just to maybe explain some of them. Uh, I know some of the people said in the comments that they voted him low because they felt he had a bad effect on game design, which is like maybe fair, but not really what we're ranking here. Yeah. 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 Seth is just the best answer for the entire game to most problems that don't require staffing or flying. Yeah. Pretty much. And like, he can be a big part of the solution to problems that do require staffing or flying because he can be staffed to go places and he can be flying rescue dropped places as well. Yeah. I feel like maybe some people, the first time they play Sacred Stones, kind of expect him to fall off. Because, you know, he's a Jagan. That's, in theory, what they're supposed to do. But he just keeps killing stuff the whole game. His only (laughs) real flaw is he can get a little unlucky on speed. On average, his speed is fine. But it's, like, kind of just fine. So if you get a little unlucky, he might need a speed wing. But I like to give him the speed wing if he needs it. Because then he just, he doubles and kills everything for the whole game. Well, it's also, like, who's really, like claiming the speed wing otherwise i mean like i mean there are people who also who otherwise want it but like do they have a better claim than seth and i I don't really think most of them do the one unit that could make a case for it would be ephraim cormag yeah that makes sense i could see that yeah Whereas there are, there are other units that want it but i agree don't make as good of a case like gusel wants a speed wing but because i was thinking like Erica Garrick would like the Speedwing, but... He was who I was thinking of, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes he can get it, because like I said, Seth doesn't always need the Speedwing. Yeah, exactly. Just sometimes it's like his one flaw, he can get a little unlucky, and then he's not fast enough to like double fast gargoyles or something. And oh no, yeah. he can't one round the faster gargoyles. What terrible unit. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, everyone else can do that. All right. <laughs> so general agreement on this one, then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Next one's another one I agree with the commenters on. We haven't gotten into too much disagreement yet, which is Franz in pretty good with 59% of the vote, putting him in that category. Uh, commenters noted that he was uh, one of the stronger early game units. People seem to say third best early game unit, but that there is an opportunity cost to training him because there's a lot of early games that want early game units that want exp uh some disagreements on whether he's better or worse than the other calves and and by how much this was also our first seth 2 unit i made a uh, note anytime a unit got called god. seth 2 uh so franz is seth 2 no franz um, is seth 2 1 there we go yes i i would describe franz as like seth 0.5 maybe but that's about <laughs> it <laughs> I will say, I've never actually used Franz, though, so, I mean, I'm not the best reference You've never point. used Franz, really? No, I don't know why. I just never had any interest. Fair enough, I guess. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little nice to Franz here, though. I don't think Franz is Seth 2, but I think third best early game unit is actually underselling it. I would say second best early game unit. Who do, um, like, when they say third best early game unit, who are the people they put ahead? I'm assuming it's Seth and Vanessa. Yeah, that's who I would figure too. Yeah, that makes sense. Which Vanessa is better than him, but I don't think in the early game. Oh, okay. okay when I hear like best early game unit, I assume like um, like best units out of the early game in general, not best units in the early game. Oh, that's fair. Oh, so did you? So Seth, did you maybe think um, like Vanessa and Otto slash Molder? Oh one no, one I, I think um. I think I was thinking Vanessa then Franz, but I, I was thinking Arter could be that third spot also. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I, I don't think that would be crazy. I think you could make an argument. 
Oh, I think you could definitely make an argument for it, which yeah. is why I was wondering what people were saying. But yeah, I think in the early game, this is your second best unit. He's got mm-hmm. good move. He's not like bulky, but he's not squishy. <laughs> yeah. He can yeah, take he like a hit or two. In, like, he'll die in like three hits instead of two. Because like if Vanessa yes, gets hit by yeah. like two axes, she's dead. Yeah, his speed is good. He gets a couple levels and he starts doubling things. Mm-hmm. He can switch for weapon triangle advantage. So he's got swords in the early game where it's all axes and you get to like chapter five where you start seeing or chapter six, I think, is where you start seeing more lances. Um, and then you can switch to a lance too, and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so really good in the early game. I think we're going to talk about this a bit more when we get into the other horses, but I think Franz feels better than the other horses in like a casual playthrough because his offense is better. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? Because he ends up being faster than Kyle would be and often stronger than... Yeah. And stronger and tankier than Ford would be, right? I also think he has... Um, I think he has, like, the training arc, too, where it's, like, a lot of people get him, like, um, like from, like... He's, like, starts at level 1, right? So they, like, use him for most of the game and have, like, this... Not training unit, obviously, but they see the growth in that unit, and I think people like that. Um, whereas, like, the two other Cavs, they obviously get a lot of levels, but they don't feel like they've been with you for as long as they get most of theirs in 5X. Yeah, well, and I think the more challenging combat you want your Cav to do, the better Franz feels. And I feel like the more you kind of, like, optimize for speed, the more you just throw Seth at things. <laughs> but, like, if you want to use a unit other than Seth for these things, Franz is faster than Kyle by a notable amount if you're yes, using them for more than bare Franz. minimum combat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I, I, w- I would put him there. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I do also, did also want to make a quick note. Even if you don't train him, he still makes good contributions in the early game because he sets That's up true. kills for Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa needs help killing things early. Yeah. Well, damn. And he could maybe be Paladin 3, too. Mm-hmm. If you train him a little bit, and but you don't want to give all of the XP to other units, he could maybe take that second Knight's Crest. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Next up is Gilliam. Gilliam Uh, went into just okay with 52% of the vote. Uh, This is uh, the first one I really disagree with. Yeah, Uh, I was surprised by this. (laughs) I I would have put Gilliam in not so good. I don't like this unit. Uh, I will say the comments generally felt pretty negative on him. Pointed out that he's got pretty low defense. A lot of the tone was like, I guess he can become a great knight. But it's not that good. And I do. So I agreed with the comments. Yeah, his bases feel like really low for some reason, which is like bizarre. Oh, no. The reason why they feel like... low is because he doesn't have personal bases. Basically, oh yeah, no, that'll that'll do it. But it's like weird because he's like level four, and Franz is like one, and like they write it so that he should feel like a more competent fighter than Franz does. But like even in chapter two, he doesn't. Yeah. Just like, no. Okay. One of my favorite things about Gilliam is that he's the vulnerary tutorial. So if you play with tutorials on, I believe the first thing Gilliam does is attack a soldier, miss, and get doubled. Phenomenal. That's sad. It's really depressing. That's really sad. I'm pretty sure that's true. But like, what getting doubled by a GBA soldier though? Really? (laughs) On his join map? Well, it's scripted. I wouldn't say yeah, it's scripted. Oh, he actually does. Okay, okay. He does get dealt by the axe guys, though, which is, like, actual damage. Or maybe it's an axe guy and not a soldier. I, I'm pretty sure he attacks a unit, gets doubled, and no, then I uses think you're right. one. Okay, um, if it's an axe guy, actually, then sure, I can see it. If it was a soldier, I was gonna say, that's a new low. Yeah. I think the other thing that hurts Gilliam, because I just played FE7, too, and I was thinking about how, like, Oswin's pretty good in that game. Yeah. But um, FE7 has a lot of secondary things to be doing on early game maps. Yeah. Whereas FE8's early game is like pretty linear. Like it's mostly you could just send your good units at the objective and there's not another super important thing to be doing that you can do on low move. Like the kinds yeah. of things that you want to do are like chapter five, someone needs to grab the villages, but Gilliam's no good at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it needs to. It's ideally Vanessa. Like that map is so good for showing off like how to use Vanessa. So just like lackluster bases and then like maps that do not support the kind of unit he is yeah if you could get him to great knight great knight does help yeah no it definitely does 
I also like his like growths aren't. I mean, his growths are fine, but like they're not even like super high in defense. I feel like GBA in general does not like high defense growths. I know FE6 particularly is insane about them, but even like this game, I want to say it's under 50 still. Which is oh uh, no, like, it's 55. percent Is it okay? No, it's his strength that's lower, which is also not good. Now I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he also only has like 30 speed, so he's not going to grow out of that bad base. Oh, yeah, no. he's not. No way. Um, well, I mean, apart from that one, don't you remember that one run I was doing of uh, FE8 where like my Gilliam got speed like like 13 out of 14 levels for some reason? That was no, pretty no, no. funny. Yeah, that was really funny. All right. Seems like we agree, Gilliam. Not the best. Yeah. Yeah. I, no argument. Yeah, no, he should. I don't think. I, too, just okay is too high a category for him. Just sure. sad. Honestly, um, I hate saying just okay is too high for you to. <laughs> On the well, opposite end of the why. spectrum, though, <laughs> Vanessa went into really good with 54% of the vote placing her there. Uh, I agree. I thought the comments were pretty spot on, pointing out, uh, you know, decent to good combat. Flying utility, early join, maybe a little bit too much emphasis on the combat if I want to nitpick something, uh, mm. but I thought the commenters were pretty spot on on this one. Yeah, I guess the, like, I guess in terms of, like, the early game stuff, it's this part's about, like, how, you know, she gets killed, she can get kills when when someone else sets them up for her, which, like, you know, is not something that you shouldn't do, but, like, you know, her combat early is not good <laughs> you know, she's really not even bad. really good at having kills set up for her yeah. <laughs> in chapter two you lower a brigand for her to kill and she still has like a 60 something hit rate and they kill her in like two three hits <laughs> yeah it's like you have to like put in a lot of effort with it i mean it's definitely worth it um but like it feels bad it feels really bad yeah. yeah, I mean, you should definitely do the training arc. I just feel like it sometimes it goes a little underspoken how annoying yeah. the training arc is at the beginning. I feel like my hottest take is that I don't like Vanessa, but it's it's less of a she's not good and more of a I don't like this unit feel. <laughs> That's fair. I think I do. Hmm. I feel like even later on, like her combat doesn't get like massively great. I guess like the main thing I'm thinking of, right? is um like chapter 15 like you can have her fight all of the um wyverns towards the right hand side of the map but that's usually with the help of the of, like the dragon spear which is effective damage so like yeah that's yeah. the weapon i would describe vanessa's combat as typically good enough <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> when you think about like what you need her to do sport. like in erica route it's like uh she can help out with some of the combat on chapter nine uh, or just do rescue dropping. Then, like, Village of Silence, she's going to go kill spiders and mogals. Um, and then 15, she's going to take the dragon spear and go kill dragons. Probably the most demanding uh, enemy she's going to fight is Valter. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, which she can do. You need to train her for that, but she could do it. So, yeah, very good unit, but, like, primarily for rescue dropping utility. I think she functions a little differently on Ephraim and Erica route. On Erica route, I care quite a bit about her combat because of those couple maps that I just mentioned and mm -hmm. Cormag coming later. I was going to say, Cormag's the big factor with her. Yeah, um, whereas in Ephraim route, I don't, do you, I don't know if you even need to promote Vanessa in Ephraim route because you, you get Cormag and he does your combat. Yeah. I mean, you have the whips, so, like, there's no reason not to. Well, I guess but, the reason yeah. would be to train someone else in the early game, right? Yeah, I feel like you yeah, still I kind suppose. of want to give her... I guess for most of what she has to do in the early game, you don't really need her to, tra to train her, which is, like, pretty good. Like, I feel like even in, like, the scenario you're not using her, she still gets a lot of use. Like, I don't like using her that much long-term, and I still use her a lot for, like, the six village or the villages in five... Um, just rescue dropping, and like that's like a lot in and of itself. Yeah, or even like distant blade. Even if you didn't train her, she can still go drop Seth to the south or grab the village. I yeah. feel like it's a real testament, actually, to like how much um, as hard as it is to like say what like the game developers intended or whatever. I think it is a testament how much stuff they specifically like put in the FEA early game for flying units to do. Yeah, and that's yeah. a niche she's like stuck with. Like, she's only covering for a while. And I would say for, like, 
um a lot of the maps were like you really need it initially for like speeding up gameplay like i feel like she's doing a lot even if you don't deal with her combat yeah she's making pretty big contributions there yeah like i don't like i it's hard to not argue she's not worthwhile and even without the combat yeah great unit i agree with uh the comments she's really good yeah mm -hmm. next up is molder he went into pretty good with 48 percent of the oh vote. interesting I thought that he would have gone into really good, but I think I think it might be a difference of, perspe of perspective here, possibly. Yeah, I think this is the biggest unit where playstyle super heavily affects where you're going to put him. Because if you play the game fast, he's basically a free warper, and none of the other one, none of the other warpers are. <laughs> but yeah. if you're playing slower... That becomes a lot less big of a deal. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, like, like if you want the higher magic, right, you can just, like, stick with Natasha. And if you're spending, like, the extra turns on six when you've got the torch staves, like, you can make up the difference in weapon rank easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you're allowing yourself to take some extra turns to spam torch or whatever, then Molder becomes a lot less exciting because... The war his his boon is that the warping is basically free, but he's not better at it than anybody else. Like basically every other candidate is better than him at it if they get yeah to exactly. It. Like obviously in an efficient context, it's mostly like his warping is sufficient apart from like the finale warp, like some of like the very late game warps. In a casual context, yeah. having further range for your warp better, <laughs> obviously. I was gonna say like um a lot of a lot of casual players might not even be dealing with warps. To be honest, yeah, like, yeah, that's who. Whether that's even a factor or not, I'd say is a big thing for him. Yeah, but I mean, I guess there's even like the thing about like, you know, if you are like just deploying him as a staff bot for like physic, for instance, you'd be like, oh, his range is terrible. Yeah, that's true, and that's going to be a bigger field unit yeah. field thing for casual playthroughs, one hundred percent. Yeah, so like I think for the way that I usually rate units, I would put him in really good, but I don't have any problem with pretty good for my like no criteria generalist play style ranking. Yeah, I, I think, think it's fine as well. Yeah. I think it, it respects the that he can get to warp quick and it's really good, but that not every playthrough mm -hmm. cares about that. Next up is our first trainee and the highest rated trainee. Uh Ross went into just okay with 43% of the vote. I feel like that's like one of the most divisive ones so far, too. That doesn't surprise me. Based on the comments, uh, this is by far people's favorite trainee by like a tremendous margin. Uh, people really like the hatchet. People like Berserker. They like that he comes in the early game, so he's not hard to train. And I think all of that is true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was just going to say, I was like, I don't think that's surprising at all. Like, you know, he's super low level at a point in the game where like, your only notably high level unit is Seth. So it doesn't feel as like terribly out of place as do Amelia or Ewan when they join later down the line. It doesn't feel impossible to train him, which I think is the big problem with Amelia and Ewan as training as like unit feels. I think also in terms of the payoff, as as you said, Lizard, Berserker, people like the crit bonus, people like the water slash mountain walking. Even though, for instance, Amelia eventually being able to get on a Paladin horse is, like, you know, cool. It's like, well, we have other Paladins. We have a billion other Paladins. Right, whereas here, this is the first Berserker you can get, and we'll get to this later, but people don't like the other Berserker that much. Yeah. And no, exactly, like, the Hatchet's also just, like, a really handy weapon to, like, give him... One two range yeah. with like some semblance of accuracy. <laughs> it, it feels really good to use, to be honest. Like, yeah, it, just it feels, feels really good to use. use. Absolutely, yeah. so I can understand. Yeah, and of course, it has to be said we can give the hatchet to somebody else, but it does make him easy to train. Uh, I also think it helps that chapter three is like it feels like a map that's designed to be taken slower. You obviously don't have to, but like it's like it's just a very cramped space that feels really easy to train Ross in. Yeah, and I mean, they give you that guy you can just chuck a hatchet yeah, over the wall at and gain true. a couple levels. It also just feels really good to get that EXP up and not have to do that much for it. It's like, oh, I want to use Amelia, and if I want to use Amelia, I have to like find an enemy that she can hit with. 
and just keep doing that. And it feels awful by that point in the game. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's... That being said, it's... I don't want to gas this guy yeah, up Yeah, I mean, much. he's not... Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where I put him between just okay and, like, what was the bottom category? Not that good? Not so good? Not so good. Yeah, th this guy's kind yeah. of on the border. Yeah. I'm fine with just okay. But, um, but yeah, like, the the issue with this guy that we haven't talked about is his... So his bases aren't great, which is fine, because he's a His growth's not good. But his growths aren't great either. He's got 50 strength, which is cool, uh, but he's on 30 speed, which is a real problem for him. And 25 defense. Uh, he actually, he doesn't get that bulky. Yeah, he's like the classic fighter, where it's like, oh, you get 2 billion HP, but you have like 8 defense. But even his HP doesn't get as high as you would think for a unit with a 70% growth. The base is so bad. Base yeah, is that's, yeah, that's low. true. So yeah, he's okay. You can train him pretty easily. His stats become like okay and he has some unique yeah. utility with the water walking and mountain walking yeah i mean his bulk is pretty good if he's standing on a mountain true i think ross kind of coasts on good unit feel over anything else which he does have which good i unit think is feel. is true. a big deal for a lot of people so i'm not surprised by this placement yeah. but next up we have his dad Gosha. Garsha. Don't do this to me. Don't do Garsha, to me. who is just okay with 55% of the growth, just like his son. Uh, commenters pointed out that he really suffers from a lack of hero crest. Most people seem to use him early game and then drop him. And some people point out that his speed is a problem, but at least you can kind of fix that in the late game mm -hmm. with Garm. Which, yeah, I think that's basically true. He, the, the lack of hero crest is a yeah. problem. I uh, particularly in Erica route. I was going to say, I feel like that nailed most of what I would say on him as a unit. I think people kind of sleep on him to some extent. Like, I think he has some nice early game contributions that people don't really ever talk about because Ross just is, feels more fun to, to use. Um, but, like, yeah. it's kind of hard to really, like, rate him in the sense that it's like, I feel like there's, like, a very large gap between him and Ross. But, like it's all in the same tier and when you're voting like this it's it's you can't really show that yeah i mean i guess as well it's like because a lot of people here have said that you know they drop uh garcia it's essentially the question of like short term garcia versus long term ross is what this kind of looks like is happening to me which are like two very different like comparisons to be making right mhm mm yeah mm -hmm. I would say I, Garcia's all right if you want to use him long term yeah, too. He actually has pretty similar problems to Ross, like father, like son, uh, where they both struggle with yeah, that speed. Family is not bad, um, but Garcia does not have the uh, the benefit of being able to like water walk or anything. And no fun crit bonus either. Uh, both of them probably want a speed wing. I think it's pretty hard for them to yeah, get one. It really is. Um, the other nice thing for Ross actually over Garcia is I was just saying Garcia has a hard time promoting because like an Erica route, Garrett comes with your hero crest. Pretty hard to justify giving that yeah, one to Garcia. Is. That's right. And then it's pretty hard to justify using an unpromoted Garcia until like chapter 14. Very yeah. So. yeah. Whereas Ross gets to use the ocean seal. And like, I don't know, if you, unless you're really big into calm, which I mean, I, they, there is an audience. There, is, uh, there is an audience for Colm, but I would, if if you told me there's one promotion item and I can compete with either Colm for it or Garrick, Garrick. Um, I well, would yeah, take well, Colm. Every single time. Every <laughs> single time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just okay is right. I agree with the placement here. Next one is Naimi. Oh, oh thank so God. With 57% oh, of the poor, vote. Poor Naimi. What were they doing? She only has four base it's strength. So it's sad. really sad. The the only thing that I mean the comments were mostly dunking on her poor stats. The only thing that she kind of has going for her is that you get an Orion's bolt early and literally no one else can use yeah, it. Yeah. But then like you could just sell and it. And it's a game where money's not tight, so like you could sell it, but you don't need to. But like the, the issue with that is that you it, like if she was like level like five or like higher, 
and it was like not a ton of levels to get her there i'd be like okay maybe she could chip her way there and then she'd have like something right but you got to like put in the work to get her to that yeah it's, it's nine, nine levels. levels like it's like it's a lot like i've done it i i like to do it i think it's fun but like, i did it three it times so yeah, that, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if i do that in a playthrough <laughs> in the same playthrough um she does get a good promotion at least ranger is a good promo i do think though her bulk it's terrible. It's so bad. makes it like she gets a sword but it's hard for her to yeah use it's it. really hard for her to use the sword like she has bad hp and then terrible defense and res so just kind of like you don't really get to fight yeah. anyone who can counter you freely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's nice it's there, I guess. And she can do rescuing or whatever. But once again, it's a seven-move yeah. horse. It's like... If I if I want a seven-move horse, I have one. I have, like, three, actually. Unless I'm, like, Iron Manning, I guess. Yeah, like, if I'm gonna deploy a unit for rescue dropping, like, I'll yeah. just use Ford, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, especially with how squishy she is, right? It's kind of like, well, if neither of you can really live a hit, then might as well be the one I didn't have to promote to get there, right? Yeah. It's like, even, like, the niche cases I can think for, like, they all take too much effort to be useful for those niche cases. Yeah. Well, next up is her automatic support partner, Colm went into just okay with 59% of the vote. And this was my favorite comment section because about a third of the comments were, quote, he opened the chest. Okay, that's really funny. That's really funny. And they're right, he do. He opened the chest. Yeah, I mean, it is. Now, the problem with a unit who opened a chest is that we could buy chest keys yes. in this game. But... He does have a couple things that he gets to get before you can buy chest keys and that he gets to steal. So he gets you an energy ring. He gets you some gems. Uh, there's a Draco shield he can steal, plus some of the less important stat boosters here or there. In the early game, he gets you some of the chests in Chapter yes. 8, assuming you didn't like save a key from 5X. And the items there are pretty good. What is it? Uh, it's a robe, a silver sword, and a uh, whip. I believe so. So that's yeah. not bad. I like that alone is like just okay to me. Like you get me an energy ring and a whip, sure. Yeah, I agree. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, I mean he's like your typical thief utility. I mean, I'd say he's solid in that regard. I guess as well, yeah, like, like um, although this is something that like doesn't like it's not necessarily going to be relevant because you can just buy uh torch staves from including from the overworld, um, over like the chapter five location. Like, he can, like, provide, he, he does provide, like, additional sight on the chapter six fold for whatever that's worth. Yes. Which is actually yeah, nice. Yeah, it's, it's not a... Because there's, like, some calves on that map that can surprise yeah. you if you don't have big fog yeah. vision. I mean, it's, def it's definitely, like, you don't have to do anything for it. Like, it's a pro. Yeah. He also gets desert item credit for however much you value yeah. that. Uh, which is tough. It's because it's like it's good items, but I feel like he gets like forty percent credit for them because there's another thief, mm -hmm. and also non thieves can get them, but not reliably. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, there's really item credit is in. weird because like we can't just be like, oh, well, if he's part of the reason why we get the warp staff, then we give him twenty percent of the credit for every warp. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like how do you how do you evaluate like oh I'm giving you four tenths of the credit for getting the <laughs> Yeah, I mean he's fine. He's perfectly it, fine. I, I feel like it's hard to rate thieves because it's like you have to like increase their value based on like what items they're getting you, but then that just leads you to like to like the warp thing. If Colm was like necessary to get warp, would I like rate Colm really highly? That doesn't feel right, but like probably. There's something that I have seen some people discuss where they largely rank units on like the strategic mm. value that they provide which yeah. in colm's case is very yes. low right an example of this would be like that one chapter of fe4 where do has to put a bridge down it's important that he does that it saves a lot of turns but it doesn't mm. change anything about how you play the map it just saves you some turns or like in colm's case that he gets you the warp doesn't change anything about how you play the map yeah uh, it just saves you some turns, yeah. right? It just saves you actively ending turn for like 10 billion years trying to God. get the fucking warp star. But next up, we have Artur, who went into pretty good with 62% of the vote. 
comments mostly noted uh, that he can warp with higher magic than Mulder and promotes with sea mm-hmm. staves. Also gets Slayer access, which gives him effective damage against monsters. And he has low luck. So oh, he gets the low luck. I hate it so much. It, it's really annoying. So yeah, it's the reason I don't use him in Iron Man's. <laughs> so many characters in Sacred Stones just don't have luck stats. Well, I, I, it's also Lucius has the same thing. So I yeah. feel like they wanted it to be a monk thing that they have really low luck. I'm not really sure why. Maybe to differentiate them why. from clerics, but like I don't, I don't really know how much clerics care about it either. But, but yeah, the low luck yeah. is it's, horrifying. Yeah, it's, it's so bad. I hate it. In in Arthur's defense, I do think you can play around that low luck without too much difficulty. Yeah, I mean you can. Yeah, because I, I feel like I mostly attack things that don't counterattack me, or things that counterattack on magic. Oh yeah, which are unlikely to kill him mm-hmm. even on a crit. And I mean he comes pretty. But it still feels really bad. He comes with pretty so solid bad, bases. He's like he's doubling a lot of the enemies in his join map. Um, oh, I mean they are, monsters. but like it's still nice. It gives you some time to keep boosting his stats up. No, it's still nice. I agree. And I, I feel like loot struggles more than he does in that regard, which admittedly is probably because she has three con and the game decided she should get weighed yeah, down by she, fire. Yeah, three con moments. A choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The comments were right about what's good about him, though. Slayer access is nice for Erica uh, route because you have those uh, middle maps. Yeah, where creeping darkness monster right? maps, and there's some of the some of the scary monsters too. Like you don't need Slayer for the zombies and skeletons, but it's nice for like the dogs that units have trouble doubling, or the gargoyles, oh, yeah. or the spiders that have a lot of spiders health. Are you fight a lot of those. Do. Um, the staff thing is true too. Warp is good. Arthur promotes to see stave so he can get to warp in a timely manner. Which I value more in Ephraim route because there's another unit that I like to get warp in Erica Solo, route. Right? Um, mm. Yeah, but uh, it is a good yeah. trade. If it is, it is. Besides all that, I, I would probably still put him in pretty good. I think he has a lot going for him, but I don't think he's like as big of a factor as like a lot of other units in really good art. Yeah. Next up is a very similar unit to Arter, uh, Loot. <laughs> and she also went into pretty good with 50% of the vote. So basically Luke got put into the same tier, but like if you look at the voting, people clearly thought she was like a little worse than Arthur. I would also generally say that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think it's about right. Notably, she has three base con. So in I mage, she loses speed to literally it. everything. It's so sad. It's so tragic. She she does not get C staves on promotion. And she is slightly more annoying to train than Arthur because she joins at level one and she joins uh, closer to the end of chapter four than the beginning of chapter mm-hmm. four. So like, well, she can even join at the end of chapter four. That's true. She can join after chapter four. It's really funny because like Arthur joins and he's like, you need to like get to the village and save my friend. The village is in no danger. You can just leave it. She'll just I was join gonna you. Say, does, does, can anything even destroy it? No. Nope. But yeah, I mean, I think the, the point is that Arthur gets a few rounds of combat on that map. So he could maybe be like level two and change or level three by the time you like start getting yeah, to work that's on true. loot. Uh, that being said, she's not that much harder to train. No. Uh, when you promote her, the con situation actually reverses uh, where loot can get more tome might without losing speed yeah. than Arthur. Yeah, assuming you go Mage Might. Yeah, because um, Thunder has more Might than Shine. She doesn't lose le- Might, or she doesn't lose speed to Thunder. He loses a speed to Shine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She also gets a horse. The horse is so nice. I feel like it's a situation where it's kind of you're trading more mobility, which like results in better combat, I feel, uh, versus Slayer and easier access to warp. Yeah. Which I would say Slayer and easier access to warp probably wins out, but loot is still pretty good to me especially on erica route where like again i I don't care about the warping as much from these units i I feel like the conversation here is like pretty similar to like garcia versus ross and that they're both like you're getting a similar quality of unit but the difference is more just where they'd be on a tier like a single tier i don't think you're like losing it yeah i agree with that yeah i mean i think this is also like it's tough because we only have four tiers yeah. to work with. Yeah. If we had like six, maybe she could be like a tier yeah. lower. Last, <laughs> me when you... Because YouTube polls only have the option, four yeah. options, right? Yeah, yeah you I can't do so. more than Christian, four. I don't really YouTube. know how much getting that granular would really matter. 
it's just like literally yeah. me real drug no, for there. like a community yeah. poll where it's like eight billion people I, yeah like Granular this kind of com- like hard. this kind of comparison between like these two units is the only time i would ever say that this like distinction matters mm-hmm. uh but next up we have another staffer we have natasha who went into just okay with 58 percent of the vote in that tier uh, the main comparison point the comments were making was obviously Mulder, the other early staffer. General agreement was that Mulder was better, but opinions ranged from by a lot to by not very much at all. Again, I think this really just heavily depends on how fast you're yeah. playing the game. Yeah, because like, because guessing from D to C staves, if you're taking some extra turns, is not hard. No. You literally have the map off. Yeah. She joins where you can do that. Yeah, or like like we could sit on Creeping Darkness and spam Torch, right? Yeah. Hmm. So I think in a slower playthrough, the differences between them are fairly minute. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. I do think Mulder's better, because the differences are, are... The differences are even there on slower yeah. playthroughs. Like, Mulder has the option, you could bench him for a couple maps, he'll still hit his staff ranks. Um, and then obviously in faster contexts, it's a lot easier for him to hit his staff ranks. Well, in faster con- depending on how fast the context we're talking about is, and how optimized it is, you still train up her staff rank as well. Yep. Yep, you do. Yeah, and I also- Because, also- like, someone has to, like, someone has to be able to, like, use Haman, use Rescue, etc, etc. So it's not like A-Staves is the only benchmark we're trying to get to. Yep. Yeah, that's true. She also does have a cool promotion. Uh, I feel like Bishop gets a lot of love because of Slayer. Yep. But for these staffers, where I don't really care about their combat, Valkyrie's bad. Yeah, I was going to oh, say, I, yeah. I, I, like neither really wants combat. I mean, I know there's like some like funny stuff you can do with Mulder, but I mean, I would say for ninety percent of players, Mulder isn't really seeing combat. Okay, ninety's a lot, but like for most people using Mulder, <laughs> I would say they're probably not using Mulder for combat. Um, but the extra move on Natasha is just nice in general, and if you are using her for those extra staff rank like boat like stuff, I mean you realistically can get her to that and just have her use her for like extra because like being on a horse gives her stuff like, um, like the rescue stuff which isn't really important or like extra staff range and you're not putting like that much extra effort like it's not like Namie where it's like do another training arc put all that exp into it. Natasha isn't competing for as much exp I would say. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I just thought of something, actually. If we don't mind grinding like up her staff rank, I don't know why our point of comparison would be Mulder. I have this in my notes. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, the problem for oh, Natasha man. at a slow pace is the moment we start to say, what if we just spam Torch on Creeping Darkness? My immediate thought is, what if I do it with loot? Yeah. Uh, Lethal, because also. then we get oh, we get better magic. We have our horse earlier. Yeah, <laughs> it's but true. That's why I would put. Luke I mean, in, in, higher, right? Like, I, I think that's. Um, I was gonna say, like, I feel like, like that's like a fair comparison, but it's like, is yeah, would that like change anything? No, like, that's I would basically still put the Luke reason higher, why I have Natasha in just okay, and every other staff are higher. Yeah, and and, and yeah. And none of those things I would I'd say would put her higher. It's just like, oh, these are things that are nice. It's what's keeping her out of not yeah. so good, really, than what's putting her into pretty good. I would I would say. That's fair. I guess it's pre- I guess it's just in- I guess it's interesting though. I mean, it makes sense that like the obvious comparison point would be uh you know the uh, other staff locked unit who joined like uh you know two or three maps before. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so it's just okay. She In slower playthroughs, she can do good stuff, but maybe other units do it better. In faster playthroughs, there are still reasons to use her. Yeah. Um, next up, we have Joshua, who was voted into pretty good with 51% of the vote. Uh, only real comments were on, like, how good his base stats are, which is true. And that 1-2 yep. range is really important in FE8. I feel... Mm, I mean, 1-2 range is really good in fe8 but there's a lot of things for one range units to do yeah in fe8 yeah i will say when i made my video on joshua many moons ago i said that i thought he was underrated i do not think that anymore i think uh pretty good is pretty good for joshua 
<laughs> yes. I, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I think I think that's pretty good for him. The, also, the beauty of I, Joshua is you have a bunch of shitty combat units and Seth, and they're they're eventually some of those units are going to grow to not be shitty combat units, but for now they're shitty combat units. Joshua's yep. here in one rounding things. Yep. Uh, so for me, he was like a bell curve of a unit. Like you know that meme with like uh like a newbie on one side of the bell curve uh, and then like yeah. the veteran yeah, yeah. on the other side yeah. and then the uh-huh. middle is like uh, some other guy yeah the that average, was like the that was allegedly. i was that meme with joshua because i first played fe8 and i was like this unit's great he kills everything then i got to the you know i played a bit more fe8 and i was like oh this unit sucks he doesn't have one two range or a horse and then now i'm like this unit is great he kills everything <laughs> <laughs> He does also suffer from lack of hero crest a bit. He doesn't get to promote yeah. until late in Erica route. I feel like I feel like it's kind of I feel like it's not as bad. It's definitely not as bad as it is for um Dorsia at least. No, like, he doesn't his need his promo like, gains as much. Yeah, he doesn't need his promo gains to kill everything. <laughs> yeah, whereas like he's also it's also not like um Garrick where like you're getting like hand axes out of promo. Like he's not getting out of sword luck. Regardless no, of what you in do. In fact, with that. the challenging bosses that you might want to use Joshua to kill don't exist until after that second hero crest anyway. Like the units, the, the enemies I might want to kill with Joshua, like the hard to kill ones are like maybe I have him fight Kalak. Maybe. Yeah, I was thinking Kalak. Yeah. Um, and he gets to promote before that as long as you yep. don't have some third hero crest unit you're using. Yeah, so I I don't know. I mean, I would I would leave him in a similar spot. The base is really it, like his base is like even like it's I don't want to say it's similar to Vanessa because they're doing very different things. But I feel like those high bases are useful even if you're not using yes, him I would agree. in a similar way that if you're not using Vanessa, flying is still helpful temporarily because yeah. he can nice. even like it's a nice set positive. up kills for people where because yeah. often he's in situations where. Um, he can choose to either not kill with an iron sword or not kill with a steel sword. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And set up a kill and, or kill with the killing edge, uh, which by the way, might as well be a PRF for him when he joins, because you don't have another C rank sword user except for Seth and Seth doesn't need it. Yeah. Seth um, does not need it. <laughs> unless you're like giving Erica. Well, Erica, Erica Literally starts at swords. Yeah, that's why I mean, like, I mean, you'd have to give her like. Yeah, she can get there, but sword like, use. you you have to want to get her there. But yeah, that's what I mean. Like, you have to like yeah. give her everything. All right, are you guys ready to move on to? Oh, oh, is it time? The, is it the time? result that upsets me the most. Oh yeah, this oh, one. It's, it's time. Yeah, it's I know time. About this one, yeah. Ephraim placed really there good go. with sixty four percent of the vote. Only five percent of votes total were below pretty good. That's so sad. That's the, so sad. Man. The comments mostly pointed out enemy phase as well has good bases, so he doubles. He can take on groups of enemies because he has one two range. Uh, this is Seth three, by the way. Um, <laughs> he has a training oh, opportunity great. in five X, and when he hits late game, he gets a horse and a strong weapon. Um, uh, this oh. is like I mentioned, probably my most disagreed with placement for me. He's like top of okay or bottom of pretty good. Yeah, I was. Yeah, that's that's roughly what I was going to think. I was gonna put. Him. Uh, actually, he's like around where Joshua is to me. Yeah, I, I yeah. actually, yeah. I can see that. Um, I would put him easily. a little yeah. higher than I, Joshua, I but but not by that much. Well, I guess in that case, I was gonna say because I'm a hater, I'm gonna just say okay. But if I'm saying he's a little better than Joshua, then I have to say pretty good. Yes, <laughs> yeah, sorry, you've yeah, been contractually yeah. obligated. I played myself. Then. Was this was this about him being able to take on groups of enemies? That's not true. Yeah, that's that's I think people underestimate um the limitations of Ephraim's bulk. Because his offense is good. The offense yeah. is like not a problem. Um but he really can't take that many hits, and he's not dodgy enough that you're gonna want him to be yeah. dodge tanking. Yeah. His PRF yeah, uh, is good. Yeah. I think like eventually. I think, like, eventually he gets, like, enough defense that, like, not enough, but, like, more defense that, like, he can take a little more. But especially early, he's, like, only taking, like, 
at most two enemies. I don't think he's taking two most of the time. Um, yeah, I would say like three plus is when I start to mostly worry about Ephraim. Um, yeah. But this is sacred stuff. Like I have units that can take three plus, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. His PRF is good. I think makes it really easy to use him throughout a playthrough. Like even if you don't want to like invest in him, he can pretty much always pull out the rag and leaf and kill a horse. Oh yeah, it's it's great. Oh, yeah. It's really convenient. It's a great PRF. It's so it's so nice. I I will I think Ephraim gets a lot of um like good unit feel vibes just because well first of all, people love the infantry lance. I I it, it is just cool. is. It's a fact. There's no denying it. It it's cool. We don't get it as much as we probably should reasonably. It's neat. Um but also just like 5x is just like really easy to train a unit like him I, it's not even like you necessarily like you should just like it makes yeah, it easy i think for you can train him in 5x if you want like obviously in faster oh, playthroughs yeah. i think you should train one of the horses but like i feel like it would be overly prescriptive of strategies to be like you can't train ephraim in 5x yeah you're just like you can't oh, train ephraim course. everyone knows that you have to like put him in awesome saddlebags carry him to the front <laughs> <laughs> He just can't fight otherwise, you know? There's yeah. just no way. I do think in faster playthroughs, he can suffer from uh, being rescued syndrome. Yeah, I mean, especially on Ephraim route, right? He really does suffer from, uh, like, mm. the fact that he basically always needs to be carried by someone else to get somewhere. His late promotion is good. Siegmund is good. He gets a horse. It's a seven move horse, but it's still, you know, seven move is fine enough if you have good stats. Like the reason I had a problem with the seven move for Naomi and Erica is because they don't have good stats. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'll go pretty good on Ephraim, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah, that works. But like I you can't you you can't only agree with the five percent of oh, voters. Yeah, fair enough. You can't go fair with them. enough. What about democracy? <laughs> All right. Think about the people. Well, I'm going to disagree with the people again on the next one. Next up is Ford. Oh, uh, Ford went into just okay with 60% of the vote, placing him there. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Before people we say are anything so else, mean to may Ford. I ask, what, what was the vote for Kyle, and what's the percentage on that? Pretty good, 57. That's too big a gap. That's too big a gap. Yeah. Yeah, I... People are so mean to Ford. Like okay. it's just. I'm gonna be honest just, though. I think it's mostly just a meme. Yeah. Because I mean, the comments enough. weren't as mean to him. I mean, most people pointed out, like, I mean, he's a calf. He's the worst calf, but a calf is a calf. Um, he has mm. a very, very fringe upside. It doesn't really matter that he starts a level higher than Kyle. So. Maybe you could get him to promotion faster, but like in practice, it doesn't really matter. They both promote by chapter nine, which is when. You yeah, I've seen. Do. I've seen people like I've seen a couple people actually like mention this, like not in like the theoretical sense, but, like actually mention this as a point in this favor, where like they actually care about like how much experience they can funnel into like their units, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is a factor. It, like it is technically something, but it's like very technically something. <laughs> yeah. Potential user of that second knight's crest if Franz didn't, like, get to 10. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't... Like, it's... Pretty much most of the stuff you can do with the other two, you can do with Ford. Like, yeah. He is the worst Cav, though, of the three. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's a slight downgrade, but it's like, if we're, like, loot and ardor or like Garcia and Ross aren't far enough to be in different tiers. I don't really see how far I could Kyle see it if Kyle was like tiers. fringe pretty good and you were like, okay, maybe like but but yeah, Kyle was pretty solidly maybe. pretty good. So I think Ford's gotta be in there too. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um we kind of talked about Kyle a bit here. Uh Kyle's a little bit better. He has a pretty solid base bulk. Uh Ford's a little faster, but like not really so much that it matters. Kyle is Seth Four, by the way. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. The you know, the thing that's really oh, okay. tragic about Kyle. Well, it's not it's not the thing that's tragic about Kyle. It's the thing that's tragic about Gilliam. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they have the same base defense. Like he and Kyle. They have the probably same base defense. do. Honest to fine, God. Yeah. I like Kyle. Kyle's a fun unit to use. Yeah, I, I like Kyle. I've I've never used him also. 
which means I guess I'm missing out on all the stuff. He's pretty bulky, which is nice, Honestly. I think, for the Paladin 2 role, because it means if he, if you mess up a bit and you bite off a bit more than you can chew, uh, he's a little less likely to die. He does have worse combat than Franz. He's not going to double as much, but I can live with that. I have other units that I want to use for difficult combat. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're having, like, if you're having, like, your second Paladin do things like rescue dropping and that and that's something that you like mess up in the execution for whatever reason right like him having better defense and the speed difference not mattering as much with the rescue penalty is just like is an upside that he has better bulk it's yeah. a straight upside plus i like promoting vanessa and a mage and it can get pretty tight to get a third unit to level 10 so that's why i like yeah Ford and Ky like when i play erica route especially and i really want to promote vanessa um i like using kyle or ford so that I don't have to give EXP to Franz. Not like that I don't like him. I just yeah, that is there's nice. other units I want to give EXP to. Yeah, yeah no, that, that is nice. It is definitely a pro. All right. Especially when you're not getting at giving F from any of that True. EXP. <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Next up is Tana, our next flyer. Uh, she was placed into pretty good with 55% of the vote, which I agree with. Uh -huh. The comments mostly focused on she's a flyer and flyers can pretty much always do something. Um, yep. Worse than Vanessa with opinions ranging on whether that means we deploy both or don't bother with Tana. Um, and a lot of focus on Tana's training arc uh, being kind of annoying. Those are all definitely like factors. I feel like for a lot of FEA teams... The extra flyers aren't a huge ask, but I mean, it depends on your team comp. I think there's a little bit of a double standard with Tana's training arc and Vanessa's training arc. Yeah, I mean, like, mm -hmm. okay, Tana joins, and on both routes, I feel like you do a lot of a training arc against monsters who just suck in every single sense. Well, that's they what I'm thinking, suck. like... When I train her on Erica route, she just comes to Creeping Darkness and kills the crappy reinforcements at the top left. Yeah. Whereas, like, we we mentioned earlier with Vanessa that, um, you know, she has, like, 50 to 60 hits for, like, 4 damage on, like, one of these axe bros or something. Yeah. Like, to me, like, Tana's training arc is less painful to me because we have the like the big monster route i prefer on erica route by the way that's why i'm talking about erica route yeah makes sense like i train her on this route map where it doesn't even feel like grinding because it's a route map so somebody's got to kill those monsters anyway yeah if someone's gonna if someone's gonna kill them it might as well be the flyer <laughs> yeah and mm -hmm. unlike the early game tana's exp is very not competed for vanessa's already yeah. promoted uh, Garrick is either already promoted or maybe you're getting him a level or two on this map. Uh, like, who needs XP at this point? I mean, everybody likes XP, but, like, no Marissa. one's in desperate need of it anymore. I don't know, Marissa's really begging for it. <laughs> True, Marissa. <laughs> that being said, she is worse than Vanessa. Uh, I just don't think yeah. it's because of the training arc. Yeah. Um, for me, it's more like Vanessa gets to do stuff longer because her training arc is sooner. She gets to be ahead of Tana when Tana joins um, and will probably continue to be so long as you're like using both of them. It's also uh, it's also just the fact that like, you know, there's a lot of like flyer stuff that can be done in early FE8, which is chapters that Tana simply does not exist for. Yes. Yeah, that too. Uh, I also think even if you don't train Tana, you still deploy her on some maps. Yeah, I, yeah you do. Um, like, Chapter 9, Erica route, she do the rescue trap, drop or grab the village. Chapter 10, she can go yep. recruit Inez uh, easier than Erica can. Even in, like, so I used her in my 0% run. <laughs> and, like, even in the late game, like, 0% growth Tana... Uh, could still kill Mogals. This is not to say Tana's bases are crazy. It's to say late game. Yeah, Mogals I was gonna say suck. that's. But sometimes yeah, you need yeah. to kill one. So if Tana can do it on a pair of wings, that's nice. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and no argument uh, there. Joining in the same chapter, we have our next trainee, Amelia. Uh, 
placed not so good, 50% of the vote. Comments mostly said, fun to use, but not great. Some debate over whether she's better or worse than Ewan, um, with most arguments for her being better than Ewan revolving around CAV access. Yeah. God, the- I feel like this has been talked to death, so I don't really have anything else to say. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, okay, no. The one thing I would have to say <laughs> is that we have so many other potential calves, and it takes a while to get there. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. We have, by the time she joins, we have a paladin and three calves. And for a lot of the, a lot of the calf jobs can also be done by a flyer. We've got yeah. two of those. Um, it is a good class for her to get. I think she's the most annoying trainee to train because she doesn't have access to accurate two yeah. range. Mm-hmm. So like training her involves like setting up a kill on an enemy, which means you got to get him to like two health um, or box an archer or something. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's part of maybe that's why Knight Amelia is so popular because like. Your only, your only other comparison for Knight is Gilliam, who has a really bad opening showing, as we've like mentioned before. And then you have like 14 billion calves otherwise, so... I always make her Knight when I use her. It's just like a little more novel. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I think that's the big reason why that's so popular. I mean, that's definitely why Pirate Ross and Shaman Ewan are more popular. So, I mean, same logic could apply there. But like the prospect of um, debating... If Amelia's better because Cav access, or like Ewan's better because of XYZ, feels so granular. That's what I mean. It's so granular that like it sounds. It just sounds exhausting. I'm like, well, it's also like which uh, which unit we agree is terrible is less terrible. Yeah, like which one do we think is like point zero one percent less bad? Who's marginal? Okay. Better? So yeah, I mean, it sounds like we all agree about yeah. Amelia, uh, mostly yes. including the comments. Um, next up is Inez. Uh, he went into just okay with 48% of the vote. Yeah. Comments noted he gets basically uncontested access to any special bows like the long yeah. bow. That he is in an unfortunate class, but that enemy phase isn't everything. Player phase does still exist. And it, Inez is like hard because I feel like his like rating drops like changes significantly based on route but like assuming his best route i mean he gets like i mean he can do some nice stuff like his bases are good which is like why it's awkward to put them in like feels awkward to put him in just okay i guess he'd be higher up in that rating. i know i feel like just okay is like a good spot for him though no i i think it is it just feels awkward because his bases are decent yeah it feels it does feel bad his stats are good but uh i would say the main thing that he gets is uh, in Erica route, uh, sometimes gargoyles can be a bit of a pain. Mm. And he can help with that. I will say, enemy phase is not everything, but it does matter a lot. Because like making good use of a two-range lock unit isn't just finding him someone to attack on player phase, but like it's finding an attack where he's not left in range of yeah. another enemy. And sometimes that's tricky. So yeah, I agree with just okay. I really don't like this dude in Ephraim route though. Um, oh, in Ephraim he joins in chapter fifteen. I don't think he has a ton to do. Well, the thing that he gets to do there is that he gets to like um like die while uh, Saleh runs across the desert with uh, Erica in his saddlebags. He gets to protect Erica as best in he his can. last stand. Yeah. All right. Next up is Seth Five. Oh my god. Uh, AKA Garrick. Oh. Um, Voted into really good with 62% of the vote. Comments noted he's got banger stats. He can promote instantly for 1-2 range with axes. Uh, some arguments for ranger over hero, and a lot of people think he's hot. Uh, and I agree, he's a good-looking dude. I, I wasn't expecting that part, I I'm have be him honest. in pretty good myself, so, so I can I. understand. <laughs> um, I have him in pretty good, but I get this one, because yeah. this is a unit like you yeah. do your first playthrough of Sacred Stones. You get Garrick, and you feel like you feel like a god has joined your army. Like, he just hand axes yeah. things for the rest of the game, and it's fine. I, I feel like a lot of units in FE8, not like not that all of them need training arcs, but that a lot of them, like, benefit from, like, some extra levels from bases, but Garrick just comes in, like, ready. You don't have to yeah, do his, anything. 
his only weakness uh, beyond his move is his speed. Is um is his speed? Yeah, yeah. He does really want to hit a couple speed levels, or you can give him a wing. Or, but I usually like that's why I actually like to keep him in mercenary for like one chapter and try to get him a couple levels and you know hopefully get a speed level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, he gets two from with, hero, which is with nice. The, um, with like the creeping darkness moment, like you have time for your. All these one range units to get combat and potentially get yeah. levels. Um, I like hero over ranger. I could see ranger if you're using him in more of like a filler capacity. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. then you get some rescue utility. Um, can he be picked up in ranger? In hero, it's really hard to pick him up. I feel like I feel like we did both know this at one point, lizard, with the um. With the promotions video, but now I just completely left my brain. <laughs> I think I Watching think the reason I think that I think we changed it so that Ranger could be rescued more easily. That that sounds like something we would do, yes. Um, but I could be wrong about that. I'd have to check. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I haven't been pretty good, uh, just because I do think that move situation is unfortunate uh, when there are like good combat units. That can move. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I got like Seth and Cormag, good. right? Yeah. Um, but he's good. I I understand the really good placement. Yeah, I mean, I I'd have him like right between those tiers. I feel like. Yeah, I will say I am talking specifically Eric Garrett. Ephraim is not as good. Yeah, Ephraim. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent. Next up is Tethys. Uh, voted really good, seventy nine percent of the vote. So pretty. I mean, not unanimous, but. Very heavily voted here. Yeah, very heavily. Uh, voted. Comments were dancer ten out of ten, um, but that her movement can be a little limiting in a game where a lot of the good units are on horses, uh, which I think is true. Yeah, um, that's, that's a I think, factor. I think sometimes people will talk about like dancers being like, I mean, I've said this before, like at worst a second copy of your best unit, but mm. Tethys doesn't actually get to dance for Seth that often. Yeah. Mm. I, I feel like it's like I feel like the I I don't think there's really any discussion on dancers being useful anymore in the fandom, but no. there like was at a time yes. an argument that they weren't, and I think that argument is like not inherently wrong, but kind of simplistic because the the first the versatility with a dancer isn't just oh they're like another use of your best unit. It's like oh they're another use of just anything you need at the time that's yeah. useful. Well, and can also, it's like different than two sets, right? Because it's like, yeah. the way I would think of it is like, she could give Seth plus five move on turn one, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Or like, two sets. And, and often better, because you sometimes don't need two sets, but it would be cool to have a Seth that can move five more spaces. Yeah. If or she could be like, you can we fight. only, yeah. Or like, she could be like your second warper, right? Like if you only have yep. one warper, great. Now you have two. Yep. Well, it's it's also like it's like you can get like an extra plus five move Seth, and then also do the extra warper and like the extra flyer use or something. Yeah, you it's know, just like a, it's a really like, flexible unit. Yeah, and I think the flexibility is a big factor in why they're always so useful. Yeah, over yeah. just combat unit again. And so in obviously both that's routes. Nice. There are slower units with good combat that she will get to dance for more often. Like, yes. she might not get to dance for Seth all the time, but she gets to dance for Garrick and Dussel. Yeah, she does, Sale. she does. Um, it's interesting, because, like, I feel like most of the discussions that I'm around where um, Tephys is mentioned is in comparison to, like, not with units within FE8, but other dancers in the series, where she's ranked, like, quite low. So it's kind Pretty of, <laughs> so I agree that she's like, you know, really good in FE8, but it's just quite funny to me being like, oh, this is a very different context to the one that I normally talk about Tethys in. Yeah. One, the, the one thing I like about Tethys more than some other dancers is she has pretty good availability. She does. In, uh, in Erica route. That's true. Uh, which is not always a given. Sometimes you don't get a dancer for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, up in we weird got times. Marissa. In not so good, oh, thank 59% God. Thank of God. the vote. Uh, my favorite comment on this one said, ah, yes, the secret fourth trainee. Yep. Mm. Oh, God. 
this does a really unfortunate uh, join situation in stats. Joins, what, five chapters after Joshua with worse bases? And or potentially even on, more. Our, on Erica rounds. Remember. Oh, you're right. It's even more on Ephraim. Yeah. Yeah. She, and um, then with a, with worse stats, worse sword rank, hence the Shamshir, because you can't use a killing edge at base. Ugh. That's tragic. It's so funny. And she did, this is a unit that confuses me, because if she had good growths, I would be like, okay, you're supposed to go to the tower. Yeah. But she doesn't even have good growths. <laughs> I, I don't. Listen. Listen. I love Marissa. In my heart, she's really good. Oh, but she's like, got a cool outfit. I'll give her that. That's what I'm saying. She's in the Fashion Emblem tier, which is the only tier that I subscribe to. She's S tier. But like, ugh. It's just really funny to me that, like, she has, like, this nickname of, like, being, like, the Crimson Flash. Uh, yeah. Everyone's, like, meant to be, like, afraid of her and shit. And she's been, like, training with, like, swords for, like, since she was a kid. Like, if I've read, like, all her supports. Like, she had, she, like, her training used to used to include, like, fucking, like, sleeping. Like, between, like, sword blades and, like, making sure not to move too much and cut herself on them. Also, Marissa. <laughs> I, I, no, I don't i just don't get the d swords that's what i don't get the most the d swords is baffling to me and if she could use a killing edge it would be so much easier to train her oh yeah because yeah. Oh, in her God. current situation she does not have good strength so she cannot like get kills for herself with an iron sword or even sometimes with a shamshir crit yep mm -hmm. and she doesn't double with a steel sword because she gets weighed down if she could use a killing edge it would be fantastic for her <laughs> yeah, so yeah i just i just i don't get it i just i don't there's no reason for it okay i've okay i've heard this multiple times from different people and i don't know if it's just the same person who's like spread like some unknown like singular entity who like said it once and then it's like kind of like spread to everyone else but i've heard multiple people say that they think that marissa is a social experiment in like oh my god how like how much people will be willing to like justify using a unit just because it's a girl. <laughs> okay, if this was like a modern game, I'd be one thing. I refuse to believe they were considering that in 2008 no, on the GBA. I think, the thing. I, think I think the reason people like her is like, I don't know, she looks cool. She does look like, cool. Like, it's just, because oh, I like using Joshua too. He's got a cool yeah. hat. Got cool Joshua hair. and Marissa just look cool. They're just cool characters. She's I just wish purple. Like, oh. I like purple. Purple, purple it's a good. really nice purple too it's like it's like this like nice like pinkish purple it's very nice yeah. all right on to the next we have lara shell in just okay with 41 percent of the vote um most yeah. people commenting on her poor join situation um or if they are lara shell defenders focusing on the horse for higher move and rescue utility it's a six move be horse. honest it pains me Lara Shell's not so good. Yeah. It's a six move horse because magical horses get screwed over for some reason, I guess. That's now. so rude. That is yeah, so it's, actually it's a bad rude. horse. Don't don't clown on the horse. Clown on the, the game. And like Man, if she were a little higher level. The promotion is good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like if you can get her to promotion, it's great. But it's seven levels she has to get on just staffing. It's rough absolutely wrong yeah i just i just don't get like okay i get like her not like she doesn't have to literally start at like level 10 with a guiding ring but like three level three yeah even come on like, like not even six like yeah. five anything i feel like even if she if she joined like level eight right even then i might look at that and be like ah two levels just based off of staff experience i don't want to do that so like yeah you know Seven Staff experience extra, in GBA games is so yeah. dark. I mean, I I feel like the reason it's supposed to be like a like a funny haha -ha joke, right? Like yeah. Larishel has appeared all these times and been like, ah yes, let us defeat the evil monsters, for I am the, the great Larishel, and you get her and she can't even attack. Like it's funny, right? Yeah. yeah. But it does make her hard to use. I, I and like I guess that's like like part of the point um where it's like like oh she joins low level because she turns out like pretty solid but it's she just, does have like, good growths yeah 
It's just like, I'm like, looking at man. these gross. They're actually really good. She has like yeah. 50 magic, 45 speed. Uh, her defense is bad, but who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, she turns out pretty solid. It's just the investment is so annoying. Yeah. So I'm going to go not so good. Say. Uh, even though the horse, the horse is not enough. I would like, I'm like right on the cusp of not so good versus just okay. It's probably not so good though. It did makes <laughs> just makes me sad. It is sad. It just makes me so sad. Uh, I did when we did my uh, hair ranking though. I did give her the top hair style. The hair is good though. Yeah, I mean it's she's she's hair. very high on the fashion emblem tier. Yeah. All right. Next up though, we have uh, one of Larishel's compatriots, Dazla, in just okay with sixty four percent of the vote. Yeah, that uh, comments me. generally saying disappointing for a pre-promote. Uh, some people prefer a trained Ross, and some don't think it's worth training Ross. Uh, th- I didn't know this, but uh, the comments pointed out uh, that he has bad growths, notably the exact same growths as Fe Seven Bartray. Wait, all of his oh. growths are the same as Bartray? Every growth, it's exactly the same. What? The- That's hilarious. That's so funny. Of all oh, the damn. units, I don't want to hear anything from. Ugh. All right, I'm going to defend Dazla a little bit, though, for two reasons. One, well, Dazla might have the same growths as Bartray, and they may not be great growths. You know who has worse growths, sadly? Ross. <laughs> I, I don't get the trainee growths thing. I don't get it. I ask why. <laughs> Dazla has the same strength, higher <laughs> HP, higher speed, and higher defense growths. Why? Why? Comedy, that's why. The other thing I'll also say in his defense is Bartray is not really bad because of his growths. Yeah, he's back at his bases. Yeah, Dazla actually has serviceable bases. He's not as good as some of the other pre-promotes, but he could do some stuff. He could fight Gargoyles in Village of Silence or Pegasus Knights in Chapter 15. I'm sure he doesn't double them, but it's okay if he kills them in two rounds, right? I mean, yeah, I mean with, it's, it's not like he's slowing map. you down. Well, I mean, they're both route maps, actually, so yeah, who cares? See, I think just okay is right, but I think I'm a, a like a little bit more of an optimistic just okay. Yes, same. Yeah. Um it's he like honestly, like he's his bases are like solid enough for what they are. They're not like amazing or like great, but they're like fine. They're certainly yeah. serviceable. I think it doesn't help that he comes with a battle axe, which if I remember correctly, I think has pretty bad hit. Yeah, yeah, that's no. like that's like his thing as an ally, um, where he, that's why he, I think like, I think because otherwise he would just kill most of the monsters around them. I want to say. Yeah, I actually think he gets to leave like a decent impression because like he kind of does kill all the monsters around him. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean like if he had like an actual weapon, I think he'd be killing just Gary. Yeah, yeah. The battle axe has sixty hit. Yeah, Oof, that's rough. Yeah, and he's not like winning any awards for skill. All right. So, yeah. So, we're all just okay on yeah. this guy. I am, yeah, I'm pretty serviceable with that. Cool. Next up, uh, one of my favorite units, and the first unit that, uh, or no, I thought Ford should have gone up. The second unit I'm disagreeing with because I think he's too low. Um, Saleh went into pretty good with 53% of the vote. Um, comments pointed out Pent but worse, which is still pretty good. Um, yeah. and good combat and access to siege tomes um, and um oh staff. wait you said that it was that you it was based on best route right best route yeah then yes i would also put him in really good cuz eric route yeah. if it was like an average of the routes or ephraim route then he's pretty good yeah but eric yeah. route sale is quite good yeah i mean i like i've never used him and i wouldn't think to put him in really good but like i i don't know i look it over and it's like i mean like what is there really to like he doesn't really have any like glaring issues like his combat is really solid for a while and you my, get him like fairly early in erica my blazing hot take i think erica rat saleh is as good maybe a little better than pent because well, I mean, okay. he's around longer. He's around. <laughs> yeah, I know, I can he's around around like Pent's just not in the game for that long. Yeah, That's I mean, true. Pent's not in the game that long, and also, um, movement staves in that game, uh, not exist. 
for a very, yeah. very, very long time. Yeah. Um, Saleh can get some unique stuff he does. Uh, he can get Siege Tomes for Egg Map. It's not, it's not totally unique. Other units can do that too, but he does it for free. Of the units that are easy to get to warp, he has the best magic. Uh, yeah. And it's relevant for the final boss uh, skip. Um, mm. It's not consistent that he gets there, though. He needs to have 20 magic, I believe. He might need an energy ring for that. If he yeah, the number, the number is 20, yeah. Yeah, and I think his growth is like not such that that is guaranteed. Or cl- I mean, it's never guaranteed, but... Yeah, he's well, got he's got a thirty percent magic growth. He might not hit that. That is, yeah, that's a bit rough. Uh, he'll probably hit it with one energy ring, though. Yeah, uh, I think it's more realistic to get him warp on Erica route. That's part of why I don't like him as much on F because he's not around yeah. for as long. Yep. it's probably not going to hit warp. I'm really I good will... on Erica map to be good. Erica route, good combat. Um, good on the desert map. Uh, oh, siege yeah. tome access for egg map and uh, warp's really good in the late game, and he can use it. I, I will say the fact that he's still reaching pretty good in FM route despite the whole getting logged to 15 thing is honestly set, does say a good bit about him. Yeah. Which is good. I really like him. He's one of my favorite characters too. That it, being it, said, it, he's like, like my bottom of really good. Yes. Um, like he just makes it an Erica route for me. <laughs> Fair uh, next up we have a uh, less good mage. You in? Ah, uh, yes. Notably less good mage. Uh, what if, what voted if into not like... so good with 47% of the vote. Uh, comments noted his somewhat unique class access because he can go summoner um, or druid and that he is a little less annoying to train because he has accurate two range, which I think is true. Yep. But it's, he what joins just so like... late for a training. Uh, yes. He does. No, it's so... Honestly, for him, it's like, what if I just copy pasted everything I said for Amelia, and then like switched out the names? Like ninety percent of it's just the same. The only thing that like I kind like, of want to talk about is that like I don't think Summoner is a big deal for him. One, because I don't think you ever need to. Okay, I mean, I can think of exactly. Okay, yeah, I, this I, isn't I, even vanilla though. But like, there's exact there's exactly one time where I was like when playing FE8. Oh my god. Oh, I want two summoners, and that's when li- when I literally set it so that everyone had zero speed, base, and growth. Okay, yeah, then I could see two summoners being used. Yeah, me. but that's not a vanilla setting, so I so I agree yeah. with you. Um, like I honestly, I don't know if I was gonna trade. Complete. Like maybe, do you even is summoner even the class he wants to go? I don't really. I mean, it's not like a bad class for. Well, it's like the thing with summoner is it's like. If you're gonna put the effort into Ewan, why am I going yeah, that's for what Summoner? I mean. like, because Summoner isn't the about the combat. The reason I like Summoner for Noel is because like he joins, you promote him, he has then he's a Summoner. But like, if I'm gonna like train a unit, yeah. I don't know. I might just go Mage Knight because yeah, because they get to do combat things. out of Mage Knight. They get to yeah. do things themselves. Mm. But yeah, it sounds like we basically agree on this guy. Um, I don't need to belabor yes. the point. I think it's pretty similar to Amelia. Yes, I, I agree. Cormag voted into really good with 67% of the vote. Yeah, makes sense. This guy's better in F than Erica, uh, mainly due to join time. Yeah. He joins earlier in F from route. Some people pointed out in Erica route, um, it's annoying that you have to wait for him on his join map because you can beat that map in a couple turns, but he doesn't show up until like, what, turn, it's turn five or turn seven, I think. Yeah, it's a while. Which is, like, mildly annoying, I guess, if you, like, really care about turns. But I feel like most people do full recruitment, and then it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, in, in Ephemerode, he's really good. He probably wants a speed wing. Yes. Just to, because he's, like, a little fringe doubling a lot of enemies. But I feel like unless Seth is in desperate need, it's not too hard for him to get that speed wing. Yeah, I don't think it's, like, I mean, like, I, like, Seth is, com- it's like, Seth is, is hard to beat, but, like, I mean, Cormac's doing well, pretty and, good. And like, like he's, he's doing a lot there. The speed wing most of the time, I feel. Yeah, it's just like it's just a That's way of true. like guaranteeing that he does have the speed. Yeah, like it's like some t- like I remember one of my playthroughs. I like Seth was like minus three on speed, and I was like, oh, uh, he needs a wing. <laughs> but most of the time, mm-hmm. that doesn't happen. Next up is Renak. 
Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about Renak. He gets desert items. He can open chests without a lock pick, but chest keys. Money money is a it, illusion in FE8. The only thing the only time I can think of like money actually like vaguely mattering for something. Or like the chest key part, like mattering for someone, right? Is um because you can't go back to the world map after you've like saved That's true. In the if level. you forget to buy your chest keys. Yeah. You forget uh, to buy then you deploy keys, Renac. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will say Renac's stats are like they're not good, but they're not like meme tier either. Yeah, that they are they you can actually do like some combat in a pinch. It's... I'm fine with just okay, like primarily off of desert item credit. Um, it is it's like a warp in boots, yeah. right? Like it's a big deal. Yeah, they're good items. I feel like I feel like I would just put it like right next to Colm. I feel like very similarly yeah. about the two. Maybe Colm like one higher if you're gonna count like his early stuff over him, which I don't which I think is reasonable. You do get some nice stuff with Colm. Yeah. Um, but like they're, they're just not the the niche is yeah. filled with both. Yeah, of them. I think Colm being better for the early stuff is worth more than like whatever combat you're gonna get out of Renak. But yeah, they're pretty similar. Yeah. Next up is Dusel. Uh, this one's pretty funny. This is the only unit where the vote was a tie. Oh, really? Uh, really good and pretty good. Both have exactly forty-four percent of the vote. Does the vote like tell you like exactly how many people voted for it, or just like nope. the Just shows me the percentages. Okay, for a second, I, I thought that you meant like it was the exact same number of people, which would have been really funny to me. Oh no, that would be crazy. Yeah, that'd be wild, right? Um, oh my god, that would be so. This crazy. is set six. Oh my god. Comments noted. Um, I think they're correct about uh, everything but the set six. Um, he has really fantastic combat on Ephraim route. Yep. Uh, he does whatever Seth is doing if it doesn't require flying. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's great for Ghost Ship, which is a pretty hard map. Yep. So for me, he's pretty good. Uh, but I think he should be in the same. I think he should be in the same tier as Garrick. Yeah, because I mean, like in Ephraim route, doesn't he basically set serve the same yeah. role that um. Like Garrick does in, in Erica route. That's the way I think of them. I'm like, if you're playing Erica route, like Garrick is your nice combat pre promote on a lower move. And in Ephraim route, it's Dusel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He has pretty incredible bulk. Um, he can struggle to double a little more than Garrick can. Like, he's more likely to need that wing, I feel like. Yes, I feel the same. His starting weapon ranks yeah. are really good, though. So, like, him actually, like, like he has an actual shot at being able to get to Garm. Yes, that's true. Garrick getting to Garm is an ordeal. Um, Dusel can do it no problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in Erica route, less exciting because he joins in 15. But yeah, a pretty good in Ephraim route. I think he's just as good as Garrick is on Erica route. Yeah, I, I could see either for this one. Yeah. I... <sighs> I have less experience with Ephraim route, so I don't have as much to say, but, like, I think the Garrett comparison is pretty accurate. Yeah, so. it, I don't know. Like, it's interesting. I wonder, do you give Dusel even a little more credit? Because Garrick does not have a phantom ship that he's, like, helping you out in. Yeah, I feel like Dusel does more for you in phantom point. ship than Garrick does on the Ephraim route map. Because, like, phantom ship... I don't know. I know how it works by now, but I feel like for a lot of people, it's like, oh no, what on earth do I do? <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like Dusel actually makes Phantom Ship for, like, most players so much easier. Whereas Garrick is nice to use on a lot of Erica route maps, but does he really make many of them that much easier? Like, if you didn't have Garrick, do any of those maps become a lot harder? No. Yeah, because I'm like, he doesn't even, like, he's not boss killing either. It's going to be Seth. Yeah. See, I don't know. Maybe I like Dusel a little better. It's close, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he also has, like, the extra move for what that's worth. Not that it's exactly yeah. a whole lot. It's, Plus you know, Kanto. one tile. That's true. Kanto is... Uh, doesn't have know. to use a promotion item. Which is not a huge deal, because Garrick comes with his. But, like... But it would be nice if we could use that on Joshua and still have Hero Garrick, right? That's true. I mean, that's true, but it's like, that's the kind of logic where I'm like, can I factor that into the unit analysis no, really? I mean, hard? I think we're pretty much splitting <laughs> like, hairs here. Like, I think they're of similar. No, I mean, we are. It's just like, that's like the logic where I'm like, that is not on Garrick <laughs> at that point. 
Next up, we have Noel. Uh, Noel um, was my guess into is just... okay. Okay, can I guess first? Uh, oh, sure. My guess is that he's probably just been put in just okay. Yeah, he has with fifty-two okay. percent of the vote, um, which I think is correct. Um, comments note that Summoner is great for casual play, even if it's not the most important and optimized play, um, and that he gets practically a free promotion on join with the Master Seal uh, on Chapter Fifteen that he starts right next to. Yeah, or in um, in Ephraim Rout, doesn't he start with Guiding Wing in his inventory? Maybe. I don't... Maybe? I, I actually exactly. don't know. Um, yeah. I generally agree with the comments on Summoner, although I will note it still does stuff in Optimized Play, too. Um, yeah, it does. Not, I, well, I think well, it's better in Casual does Play, for sure. But it does, like, you use it on Egg Map. There's, like, <laughs> there's some funny rescue stuff you can do with it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people mostly ignored Null's combat, which I think it's is correct because so it's not very good. So yeah, uh, he gets crit a lot. His all right. accuracy is bad. It's just unfortunate. He can staff, but not very well. He gets e staves. I think. Yeah, I believe so. I want to say on both. Yeah, it's like it's there. I mean, like he can certainly heal somebody. If you're really that desperate, but yeah. that's about so, it. So, I mean, I think Summoner, you're basically rating the Summoner class. How good is the Summoner after Chapter 15? I think just okay is about right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think there's stuff you can do with it. Like, if you want to play really safe uh, and you, like, don't want to do any math, <laughs> then, like, Summoner can kind of facilitate that. Yeah. I mean, okay. Mm-hmm. So, in uh, Zero Speed F8, Summoner did something, like, somewhat relevant on chapter 15, and I literally had to, like, you know, break uh, all the weapon usages of, uh, like, that berserker. Like, the one-two weapon range usages of that berserker that's standing there, because no one could survive around and come out with it, because you that's would funny. get crit and you'd die. As if you got crit twice. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think the comments were basically mm-hmm. right on this one. Um, next up was Murr. I made a whole video about this one. Did um, people call her Seth Seven? Yeah, Murr oh is God. Seth Seven. Murr went into really good with sixty percent of the vote. Um, comments were like, uh, "She gets fifty tactical nukes. Uh, flying access is nice. Needs just a little bit of training to get going, but not too much." Uh, and some people noted her bad bases. I will say, I get where the people with bad bases are coming from. Um, but she I feel bases, like because the stone, she always has the stone. Yeah, her, I was right? gonna say you have to count. Like she's never without the stone. Yeah, and the just, the stone doesn't like make her bases good, but I think it makes them non problematic. Like it's pretty easy to feed her kills. Yeah, just uh, like don't I... leave her in range. Like just don't leave her in ra- like as a level four unit, uh, in range of a warrior with a silver axe. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I would argue that she's more like 30 nukes than 50. Uh, because you're going to spend some of those training. Some enemies she needs to double to yep. kill. Yeah. She can kill all the monsters, but so can half your army. <laughs> uh, yeah. Effective damage against monsters is like not really hard to come by at this point. Mind though, her effective damage against monsters is triple effective, so that is actually something. That's true. Oh, and it is relevant against the two bosses that yeah. I really like her for, which are Morva and or no, it's mm-hmm. not relevant against Leon, but it's relevant against Morva. <laughs> yeah, it's relevant against Morva. Yeah. Um, the thing to me though, I know you put oh, her. Sorry, in... go ahead. I used to say, I know you put her in just okay for the video, or at least like that was like where you were heading. I'd still probably lead her up to pretty good, but I, I would be unbothered by pretty good. Like, if she went into pretty good, I wouldn't. Yeah, have I'm video. like, it's like, yeah, because I think what she does is good, right? Like she yeah. can kill a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that it's not terribly unique. You have a lot of units that can kill stuff often with one, two range. That's true. Often with better move and for, and that like exist for the rest of the game. Right. Yes. That's true. Yeah. I, but I, I would that. be fine with pretty good. I, I go just okay, but pretty good is justifiable to be. 
Yeah, I think I, I think Fair I would put her in just okay as well. She's just really not around, fully functioning for very long. Really good, just okay. I mean, definitely doing the most out of yeah. that tier. She's like the kind of just okay. Like it's kind of like Athos, right? Like, like you put Athos yeah. in C tier, yeah. but it's not because I don't want you. To, like, it's not because you don't use him, right? Like, of course you use Athos. It's yeah. just it's one chapter, right? Yeah, and it's also and in this case, you know, it's yeah. also. Athos, but you do have to train a, but you have to train it. You have to train it slightly. Well, it's Athos, but you have oh to train God, yeah. her, and like Athos is better than all of your units at everything. Mur is not better than all of your units at everything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um. Although she does get more chapters, so you know, trade off. Yeah, I do appreciate the extra like time you get with Mur. Yeah, but that's not really. Yeah, I'm not gonna like go like, into too much thing. detail here since I like did the video on this. But I think her design is actually fantastic. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's great. Oh no, I agree on that. I think that's part of it. The unit feels yeah. fantastic. All right, that brings us to our final unit. Last but not least, Cyrene. What a note to end on, Cyrene. I was, I was, I was gonna say, are we sure it's not least? I feel like I feel like you could say least. Cheers voted into just okay with sixty two percent of the vote. Comments noted that she can kill eggs and that she has worse bases than Seth in chapter one. That's so sad. Why did they do say, that? To be fair, what were they doing? I feel that? like that says more about Seth. Yeah, that says more about Seth than Cyrene. Because the thing is, That's Cyrene's true. bases are That's good true. enough to kill weaker monsters. That's true. I just. <sighs> She's like she's just like a weird unit in general to me. It's like it feels like it just feels weird she exists in the sense that it's like Murr feels like the natural late game character. And then it's like, oh yeah, I I have this other character that nobody really likes or cares about, but yeah. sure exists. And I will say I I know I have like Murr and Cyrene in the same just okay. Uh, but this is uh, kind of like the nature of having four categories. Yeah. Uh, Mur is like oh, at yeah, the very absolutely. top of Just Okay to me. Whereas Cyrene's pretty close to yeah. the bottom of Just Okay. Yeah. Uh, she can kill eggs in mm. Chapter 18. She could do a little rescuing. She can kill shitty monsters. And yeah. you have a lot of deployment, so you might as well bring her to do those things. Yeah. It's just like... She's only around for like four chapters, and it's just like you. I mean, the stuff she's doing is nice, but she's not the only no. one doing it at that point, especially. It's just that, like, when... the not so good, not so good for me is for units that like basically do nothing. Yeah, and I and I agree with that, especially for this game because I feel like there's like a very, a very specific group of units that do nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like not so good. Unfortunately, is, is the trainees, Marissa, and Gilliam. Yes. Uh, oh, and we put we put Erica yeah. down there, but yeah. Was that it? Were there any more not Poor. so goods? I don't think so. Poor I think Marissa. That's everyone, yeah. I want so much better for her. Oh, oh, we said Lar, or I said Lara Shell. Oh, I, I also said Lara Shell. Landed on Lara Shell. I forget where I put her. I think I put her in just okay out that's of pity. All right. Well, that's the entire uh, the entire list. I have to say, I was impressed that uh, the comments were in agreement with me for most units, and I think there were only two. No, only one. Since I since I begrudgingly bumped Ephraim to pretty good. Uh, only one that was different than my placement by two. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, I, when I was filling them out, I, I thought like most of the time that they like were pretty, were like one, like on the same tier as where I was, outside of like the specific instances of like Ford, Ephraim, <laughs> poor Ford, uh, maybe Garrick. Poor Ford. Ford was so tragic. Ford was so. So tragic. Doomed to be memed on forever. Maybe he'll be good in the remake in 20 years. True. True. Very true. We we just gotta wait for Fire Emblem can the Sacred like, Stones. Or something. What? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? He gets that as a person. He gets it's that as a personal scale. skill from the personal start. Gale force. Yeah. Four top tier. 
That it's forwarding time. <laughs> all right. Well, that is all of Sacred Stones cast. Uh, thank you all for coming on. Uh, Akira, is there anything you would like to plug? Um, hmm. Perhaps, perhaps your YouTube channel. <laughs> oh yeah, YouTube channel. Yes, I have a YouTube channel. Maybe my boss will be YouTube channel. I play channel. Fire Emblem. Um, mostly focusing on Fire Emblem fan games. So that will be both ROM hacks and stuff that's made in Lex Talionis. Um, but sometimes I do other things as well. Like mentioned uh, Zero Speed F8 a couple of times, uh, which I made recap videos of. That was pretty fun. So yeah, if you're interested, please do check out the channel. Yes, please do. But yeah, thank you both for coming on. Uh, and to everyone that listened, thanks for hanging out till the end and hope you have a lovely rest of your month. As always, a big thank you to my geckos on Patreon and a shout out to my skinks, Aaron Geddon, Cosplay Sylveon, Doopy, Emma, Ike Pumi Cabre, Lonely Voxel, Lucy Sev, Morg Wolf, Red Mage Morgan, Stars to Art, The Noodle Doodler, Upscale Furry Trash, Van West, and Wingman.